Hello ladies and gentle ladies and welcome back to another Minecraft modding tutorial for Fabric 1.21 and in this tutorial we're going to be creating a creative tab so let's go ahead and get started so the first thing I should mention before we proceed is that creative tabs in Fabric or more specifically yarn are referred to as item groups not creative tabs so that's just a very important thing to note since everything we're going to be using in this tool we'll call them item groups so we're going to create a new init class so we're going to create a new class and i'm going to call this item group init but remember obviously uh, mod item groups or tutorial mod item groups is fine too or anything else as well of course now in here we're going to create a public static final item group and i'm just going to call this example underscore group and once again, as before, we're going to create a new method that will register this for us. So we're going to create a public static. This will be generic. So T extends item group. This will return T. And then this will be called register. This is going to take a string name. Then it's going to take a T, which will be uh, the actual item group. So T item group. Then we are going to return registry one from net.minecraft.registry dot register registries dot item group then we are going to do uh, tutorial mod dot id which will take in our name so remember that's the method we created in our main class and then it also wants the item group so we'll give it the item group then we can use this method to actually register it so we can do register we can once again give it a name so we're going to call this example underscore group then we are going to do fabric item group dot builder then we're going to give it the display name so this will be the name that is used when the actual tab is displayed so for this we need to actually create a text field which will be used as the translation key for the name so we're going to go with a private static final this will be text and this is from net.minecraft.text.text and that will be example underscore title which will be equal to text dot translatable then we're going to do item group dot then we're going to add on our mod id so we're going to do tutorial mod dot mod id plus and then we're going to do dot example underscore group there you go so that will be our title and then we can use that inside of here then we can give it the icon so we can say icon and we can set this to any icon we want so we can give it a vanilla item for example so items dot uh, maybe you want to give it bread for example you can do that i'm going to use one of our items since i think that makes more sense so i'm going to do item in it dot example item like that now you see that gives us an error because this needs to be a supplier of an item stack so the easiest way to get around this is just to say colon colon get default stack and this is just effectively a supplier since it will you know supply this when needed if you want to make it more explicit and you're not too familiar with uh, lambda expressions then you can do something like this um, and I mean method references, not lambda expressions, because this is a lambda expression uh, that we're going to do here. So item in it dot example item dot get default stack. And that would effectively work fine too. Uh, but you'll see IntelliJ will say that this can be replaced with a method reference, which effectively brings it down to this, which is nice and simple. Then we need to specify... Uh, anything else that we want so maybe you don't want a name you would say no rendered name maybe you don't want a scroll bar you would you know say um no scroll bar maybe you want it to be special i don't know what that means um but maybe you want that i don't know mess around with it if you want uh you can also have a special background texture as well um now i'm not going to do any of those since i think that's highly unnecessary instead we are actually going to specify the entries so we'll go entries now this is an entry collector so this will have a display context and then the entries 
And what we're going to put inside of here is basically any of the items that we want to add to the tab. So we can do entries dot add and we can add item in it. Dot example item. We can do entries dot add item in it dot example food. We can also add blocks. So we can do entries dot add block in it dot example block. And you can do that for your all, all, all of your items if you want. Now, I'm going to simplify this since I want all of my items that I ever register to be in here. All of my blocks, all of my items, I want them to just be in here. I don't have to add them every single time. So, to do this, I'm going to actually do a little bit of a functional approach. So, we are going to actually stream the entire item registry and filter out what we need. So, to do this, we're going to do registries dot item then we're going to call get ids and this will basically give us a set of all of the identifiers inside of the item registry then we are going to stream this set so that will give us a stream so we can do functional and uh, we can do a more functional approach here then we can filter out the stream so we're going to filter this by only items that have our mod id so to do that we're going to say key which is the identifier and we're going to say the if the key namespace, so the actual mod ID that the key is using, is equal to tutorialmod.mod ID, right? So if it's equal to our mod ID, then we're going to filter out anything that does not match that. Then that will give us a actual identifier. So we need to be able to get the item from that identifier. And the way we do that is we can map it and we can map it to registries dot item and then we can do get or empty and this will effectively give us an optional of an item then we can actually map this again to get rid of that optional and the way we're going to do that is we're going to say optional and uh, optional we're going to do or else throw and basically that will just throw an exception if it doesn't exist uh, you can alternatively if you want i guess you could filter it to check that the optional um, is present and basically that would mean you don't have to throw um, you can do that if you want i would just throw um, it doesn't really matter the only reason i would rather throw is because if somehow there wasn't like it wouldn't make sense for that to be possible basically because you're saying you're already looping through all of the ids right so you know that these ids are already registered to something because they're in here um we're filtering out the ones that aren't our mod id right so they're all still going to be there then we're mapping them and we're actually getting that id from the registry noting that we've already got that id from the registry so the, this would never happen anyways um so you could in in theory also just call get um but you're obviously not meant to directly call get on an optional because you're not checking if it's present um i just like to throw because if that happens then something has gone wildly wrong somewhere so it's worth just throwing anyways and dealing with that later um and then what we'll do is we'll just go for each all we're going to do is we're going to say entries which is our actual uh, entries up here we're just going to call add on that and then we're going to close that off then finally since this is a builder we need to actually build it so dot build and we need to add an extra bracket there as well because we're inside of the register method and that is pretty much it the only other thing we need to do is the same as we do with all of our registries and that is create a load method so a public static void load and boom that should be it so we can come into our main class we can once again call this load method so let's go in here let's do um, item group init dot load like that okay now that works that creates a new item group what if instead we wanted to add to a vanilla item group instead uh, actually first we'll just quickly go ahead and do the lang and then we'll talk about that so let's do the lang first so we'll just come into our lang file and in here we're going to do item group and that is a capital g because that's what we put in our item group in it in here 
So you see we did a capital G. So we're going to do item group dot tutorial mod dot and then example underscore group because that's what we called it inside of here, as you can see. And that'll just be equal to whatever you want. So mine's just going to be called tutorial mod because that's kind of, you know, how, how generally it's done. So let's say we want to add to a to a vanilla tab. So we have a food, for example. Maybe we want to add that to the food and drinks tab. So how would we do that? Well, luckily, Fabric does have a great hook for us to use for this. Uh, it's actually called an event, um, but I prefer to just call it a hook. Um, but they are technically events. So we can do item group events. And then we can say dot modify entries event. Now the here, in here, we pass in the registry key of the item group. Now to obtain that, we need to do item groups dot, and then basically vanilla has listed them all here for us. So I want to add to the food and drink tab. Then I'm gonna do register. This will give us the entries. And all we need to do in here is say entries dot add and then we can add our item stack. So we can say item minutes dot example food and boom, that is in. We can also pass in a stack visibility. So if you wanted to add it to that and also the search tab, I'm just gonna leave that blank. Basically this will work, right? This will add it to the tab, but what if we wanted it to be somewhere specific inside of that tab? So maybe you wanted it to be after a certain item or before a certain item well luckily we can do that too so instead of using the add method we can actually use either add after or we can use add before as well so i'm just going to use add after here and i already know where i want to put it because i've already had a look at where i want to put it um, but i want to put it after the pumpkin pie so i'm going to specify items.pumpkinpie and then i can add it in here so item in it dot example food. And that'll basically add our example food after the pumpkin pie. Obviously, if you have multiple mods trying to add it after the same item, then it's just going to be first come first serve. And there isn't really any way to do anything about that. But just adding it basically after where you want to add it is going to be fine. Or obviously before is perfectly fine too. Maybe if I wanted it to be before pumpkin pie, then I would just do add before items.pumpkinpie. It's fairly simple. Uh, I'm just going to leave it with add after since I think that's just easier to understand. And this can actually be um, an expression lambda if we want. Um, I'm not going to have it as an expression lambda, but it could be. So let's go ahead and run the game. And hopefully we should see that our tab is in the game. Now, if we go into the creative tab, let's first go ahead and check the food and drinks tab. And you'll see that our item has correctly been added after the pumpkin pie there. Now, if we go into the second page, which you'll see now exists, we can see our tab is in here and all of our items are in here as well. Now, obviously, if you did want them to be in a specific order, then you would have to add them manually. There's no way to do that otherwise. And if you wanted some kind of whitelist or blacklist, maybe you wanted a blacklist would be easier, uh, then I'll quickly show you that if you did want a blacklist. So you would have something like a private static final list of item which will be your blacklist is equal to a new array list. And all you would do in your load method is you would add it in here. So you do blacklist dot add. Maybe I want to add the example item to the blacklist like that. And then what we can do is we can create a method to get the blacklist. So public static list. In fact, let's just make it public. That would just make it easier for us. So we can do that. And then obviously we could do that in our block in it as well. So we could come in here and we can add that to the blacklist. So we could do item in it dot blacklist dot add, and we can add example block like that. Um, that actually won't work because we should change this to instead of being item, this should be an item convertible like that. And that means we can then add our block into it as well if we wanted to. And then basically what we would do inside of here is we would say filter, um, once we actually have them so here after we have done the mapping we will filter out to check that to check that item in it dot blacklist 
contains. And that will just check that our item is contained inside of that blacklist effectively. Um, and I'm actually going to keep that around. I'm just not going to actually add anything to it. Um, just so you can see how that would be done if you wanted to have a blacklist effectively. Um, so that's how you would do that. Obviously, I can restart the game, but that won't change anything. So that is it for this tutorial. Uh, in the next tutorial, we will probably be covering data gen, I believe, is what I said we were going to do. So, yes, I will see you then. Goodbye.